In this video, I will introduce you to some of the built-in functions that ships with Delphi. Please look at the title of this tutorial. This is a very basic introduction to functions. It's really just the tip of the iceberg. The idea with this video is to give you a very soft landing into some of these functions. I will definitely focus on more built-in functions in a different course. So, what is a built-in function? Let me try and break that down for you. A built-in function is a predefined routine kept in a library. That means that somebody already did all the heavy lifting and thinking to program some kind of functionality and to compile it into a unit. A library in Delphi is a unit. You will remember in a previous unit we looked at the structure of a forms unit. You learned that the form has references to many other units and they are referenced in the interface section under the user statement. These units are the libraries that contain most of the Delphi functions and many of those functions were programmed by the people that developed the Pascal language over time. A built-in function also performs actions. Those actions can be something like very complex calculations or it can be an algorithm that converts data from one data type to another. Or it can be complex code logic that formats strings, numbers, dates and many other things. The nice thing about functions is that you do not have to write those complex statements and logic yourself. Someone already did that for you. All you need to know is how to call the function and what the result will be. And that brings us to our next point. A built-in function returns a result. After a function did its work, it brings the result back to the calling statement. Let me clarify that with this statement. Here I have my name, but check how I typed it. My name is in mixed casing. In this statement, I take my name as it is typed here, or it could be typed like this in an edit, and I pass it to the uppercase function's input parameter between the brackets. The uppercase function will then go and do its work in the background. That background work can be code that evaluates each character in my name individually. And if the character is not uppercase, the function changes it to an uppercase character. However, you do not have to worry how it is done. After the uppercase function completes its work, it returns the result to the calling statement. In this case, the result is assigned to the caption property of a panel object called PNL output. The Pascal language and Delphi has hundreds of built-in functions. And as new versions evolve, more are added for your convenience. Like I said earlier, I will definitely spend a lot more time in a different course on many of these functions. You can even create your own functions for reuse by yourself or by other programmers. But that is beyond the scope of this course. I will also develop a course to teach you how to do that. In this tutorial I just want to point out a handful of useful functions to get you started. String functions are probably the most fun to use. We use string functions to manipulate and format string values. I already explained the uppercase function. Uppercase changes an input string's characters to uppercase letters. This statement takes my name, which is in mixed case, and passes it to the input parameter of the uppercase function. The function will then format my name and return the result in uppercase characters to the caption of the panel. This statement takes my surname, which is in lowercase, and passes it to the input parameter of the uppercase function. The function formats my surname and returns the results in uppercase characters to the caption of a panel. The opposite of the uppercase function is lowercase. Lowercase changes the input string's characters to lowercase letters. This statement takes my name and passes it to the input parameter of the lowercase function. The function will then format my name and return the result in lowercase characters to the caption of a panel. And this statement takes my surname, which is in uppercase, and passes it to the input parameter of the lowercase function. The function formats my surname and returns the result in lowercase characters to the caption of the panel. And here is one of my favorites, the copy function. The copy function copies one or more characters from an input string and only returns those copied characters. Let's look at a few examples. The copy function has three input parameters. The first parameter is the input string, in other words the string from which you want to copy. The second parameter is the position or character number where the copying must start. And the third parameter tells the copy function how many characters must be copied from the starting point. 
This statement takes my surname as the input string and passes it to the copy function. This parameter tells the copy function to start copying at the first character of the input string. In this case it is G. And this parameter tells the copy function to copy three characters in total, including the G. In this case, GER will be copied. The copied value will then be assigned to the caption of the panel. Let's look at another example. This statement takes my surname as the input string and passes it to the copy function. The copy function must start copying at the third character of the input string. In this case, it is S. And the copy function must copy three characters in total, including S. In this case, SAG will be copied. The copied value will then be assigned to the caption of the panel. Another set of string functions are those functions we use to convert another data type to a string value. For example, in most programming languages, you cannot display a number or a data as text or captions before first converting the value to a string. Remember, string values are enclosed in inverted commas in code, but numbers are not. One of these conversion functions that we use often is the IntoString function. The IntoString function takes a whole number, also called an integer, and makes it a string value. This statement takes the number 255 and passes it to the input parameter of the IntoString function. The function will then make the number compatible to return the result and assign it to a string property, like the caption of a panel. The value of a spin edit is also a number, in other words an integer. Let's assume we have a spin edit named SEDH and the value in SEDH is 16. This statement takes the value in the spin edit and passes it to the input parameter of the IntoString function. The function will then convert the number 16 and then return it as a string value to be displayed as the caption of a panel. A decimal number is not an integer. We refer to them as floating point numbers or just floats in short. We use the float to string function to convert floating point numbers to string values. This statement takes the number 87.25 and passes it to the input parameter of the float to string function. The function will then convert the number 87.25 and then return it as a string value to be displayed as the caption of a panel. You must just take note that the result may be displayed as a dot or a comma. It depends on the number settings of your operating system. When you divide a number, you can expect that the result may also be a floating point number. With this statement, I divide 5 by 3. 5 divided by 3 is 1.666666 and it continues on forever. Here, I pass the calculation to the input parameter of the float to string function. Delphi will first do the division, and the result will then be converted to a string value to make it compatible for assignment to a string property, like the caption of a panel. And this is the result. There are also functions that can format those long decimal numbers. But like I said, we will explore them in a different course. Our next tutorial demonstrates how to use some of these string functions in a project. We will use them in our contact information project. I'll talk to you again in the next video.